So here for this level two yoga class is some information on the lymph system. Did you realize, and I know those of you who heard this yesterday, it's a repeat, but that, yeah, there is, um, to, there are 2,500 kilometers of lymph vessels throughout your body and two liters of lymph moving through your body now, which is 40% of the liquids moving through your body. Lymph nodes, this oncologist describes as like, little train stations where the train gets cleaned. <laughs> so the lymph comes into the station and it gets cleaned out. And the lymph nodes are an important part of your immune system as they trap and destroy what doesn't belong in the body. These lymph nodes are scattered throughout the body and many of them are in our abdomen. Some of you asked me that yesterday. Um, and I will say, knowing someone closely who um, dealt with colon cancer, that um, with stage two colon cancer, they chose to go in and remove a foot of her colon, which also meant they removed 14 lymph nodes. And then they went into those lymph nodes to see if there was cancer present, because that would have meant the cancer could be spreading systemically through the body. Um, so. You know, this also happens when people have breast cancer, they may end up with lymph nodes being taken out. And the body is a pretty amazing organism. The other lymph nodes can do the cleaning for the lymph nodes that were removed. But what can happen is lymphedema. Um, and this can happen from diabetes. It can be um, something that happens as we age where, where the liquid, the lymph starts to pool in parts of the body. And the lymph system does not have a heart. It does not have a pump. So the way you pump the lymph through your body is through movement of the tissue. And so I just want you to keep that in mind as we're going, because I think a lot of times we think of yoga as an emotional, maybe a breath, a physical asana, like muscle and bone <laughs> uh, fascia practice. And I want you also to consider your circulatory system and your lymph system as you're moving, how is this positively influencing those systems? Okay, so let's keep that in our practice today as we settle in. So let's all come to a comfortable seat. Really try to settle onto your sit bones and just draw your attention for a moment to your groins. In a seated position, there's a little bit of a squeeze on the lymph nodes in the groins. When we stand, there's a bit of a release. This compression and release, compression and release moves lymph through the system. Tune in now to your breath and invite the breath deep into the belly. Feel for your diaphragm descending into the abdomen. And as it does, it massages your stomach, your liver, and sends ripples of movement through the intestines, through the abdomen, through other organs. It also sends this ripple of movement through tissue that contains these 2,500 kilometers of lymph vessels. Breathe deep into this belly, into your pelvis, into your low back and side bodies. Inviting the tissue around these lymph vessels to pulse with your breath. I like thinking of the breath as a wind blowing across a pond, rippling the pond. Let the ripples move the fluid inside the vessels of your body. Feel for the breath expanding your lowest ribs, expanding the muscle of the diaphragm as it descends into the abdomen. Exhaling, feel the muscle rise up under the lungs, 
releasing breath from the lungs. And feel how the diaphragm pumps the tissue of the lungs. Visualize the muscles between your ribs, the muscles braided along your spine, all gently pulsing with the breath. Even notice if your shoulder girdle is rising and falling. See if you can relax the tissue of the neck and upper shoulders as you exhale. The pulsing of this tissue, inviting the lymph to move through. Visualize your breath rippling down your arms and into your hands, down your legs and into your feet. And let the breath be the gentle wind rippling the waters in your body. Notice how the inhales and exhales may also calm the mind. May help you come to a one-pointed focus. And then draw your attention into the heart. Feel how the heart can pulse with the breath as well. We may inhale gratitude, exhale any tightness or tension. We may inhale goodwill for the new year and exhale it out into the community. We can inhale into whatever emotions reside in our heart and exhale, holding those emotions tenderly with compassion, with appreciative joy, with loving kindness. I ask you today to hold the whole body in this awareness and in particular, the lymph and the vessels, the lymph moves through. The lymph nodes that help you to cleanse the body. In Qigong, they may have you visualize a light moving through these 2,500 kilometers of vessels a cleansing and clearing light that boosts and buoys the immune system. That recognizes the intricacy and beauty of our own bodies. When we deeply take care of ourselves, we nourish our families and our communities. Breathe that light through the vessels in your body. We can visualize this as nadis As meridians, we can visualize prana, chi, lymph, 
energy in many different forms circulating through our bodies and beyond. Let's inhale our hands to our hearts and bow our heads inward. May we honor this body. May we show it love through the practice today. Namaste. Okay. Let's come to standing. And let's gently begin by shaking the hand. And today, as we shake the hands, let's consider ourselves as allowing energy to move through the tissue of the hands and the fingers, shaking it. And then let's lift the hands up and stretch them wide and make fists and stretch them wide and make fists. Feel how you're beginning to move the tissue just in the hands. And then wrap your fingers around your thumb and circle your wrists and feel what tissue is moving. Where am I inviting myself to pulse these tiny little vessels? And let's bring the hands close to the body and then circle them up, arms long, as high as is comfortable for us, and then circle them the other way down to the sides. Feel into your forearms how you're moving the tissue, circling in front the other way again, and then reversing and circling wide. And then release the hands down, stretch them wide, palms out, and bring the palms forward and pulse, and spread them wide, and bring the palms forward and pulse, and we pulse and open. It could be down here. If it hurts to lift the shoulders, we pulse and open, one, two, and open, pulse and open, pulse and open, and stretch from palm to palm, spreading the fingers, turning the palms skyward, inhale, reach the hands up, and exhale down to the center channel of the body. As we do these rain, sun, snow breaths, inhale, rooting your feet and draw them through, clear, cold air breath, inhaling in the winter, in the season of turning inward, as we let the arms circle and invite the shoulders to move. We have a lot of lymph nodes in our armpits, in our necks, so we begin to move this tissue with the breath. And then let's take the arms wide and invite the left ear to come down towards the left shoulder, lifting the right palm and taking the thumb slightly back. Let's turn our gaze to look down over the right shoulder. You may nod your head yes a little bit to find your own stretch or take your right thumb back to open the chest. Fluid breath. And then bring the head to neutral and the arm releases and take the right ear towards the right shoulder. Now, some of you remember, if you have osteoporosis, we don't compress bone to bone. We keep length in the spine. We may not lean it as far over as possible. We lift the left palm and take the thumb back. We try to find this tissue in the neck and shoulder in the front chest and we invite it to open. And we use the breath to ripple the waters of the body, inhaling and exhaling. And then we come back to neutral and we just bobble the head a moment. And then we circle the nose and feel into the tissue of the neck, the base of the skull. Really try to get to know what is moving. What tissue moves? And take your circles the other way. 
your awareness residing in the movement, the sensation, the visual of moving the lymph with your movements. And then coming to center, let's float the arms up and inhale, left palm up, right thumb under. And switch, and switch. Fluid breath. We borrow this from Qigong. Yes, it does open the rotator cuff muscles, but feel how it's also moving the tissue of the whole musculature around the shoulder, into the rib cage, even towards the spine. And then release the arms and roll one shoulder back to the side and then stretch across to the other and let your body sway from side to side, feeling for the stretching tissue. Yes, we're stretching the fascia, but also feel how you're moving the tissue so you could move the waters in the body so they don't pool and become stagnant. And then lift one elbow out to the side and the other and draw a circle back. Fluid breath and motion. Feel how when you sway, you put pressure on one foot and then the other foot. You may even come to balance on the one side and then the other and open the arm. Can you stay aware of the center channel of the spine and find balance? You don't have to lean too far. Let the limbs balance each other out around the central axis of the spine. And then release back down. And inhale, float your arms skyward. And exhale, land the palms on your head. And inhale, turn the palms up and either fingers interlaced or not. Stretch the hands skyward, rooting the feet and bring the arms down. Touching the fingers. Inhale, lift the hands. Exhale, palms rest on the top of the head. Inhale, stretch skyward and release the arms wide. One more time, inhale and lift. Exhale, land the palms. Inhale, reach them skyward. Exhale, release. And come up into your goalpost position. And exhale your pinkies together. And inhale, lift the heart, stretch the palms. And exhale. You may recognize some of these movements from yoga or from Qigong. I mean, uh, from uh, Pilates. We do this a lot. Feel how you're drawing energy through the muscle of the chest in the armpit. You can do it more gently. You can do the arms lower, more like wings. We just want to invite the tissue that we can invite to move. But if you've had surgery in the chest, you don't want to strain and pull too hard on the scar tissue. I invite you to massage those areas as well. And then bring the hands up, palms up, and press up. And lower the elbows out and press up and lower and press. And really reach, rooting the feet. Stretch the whole spine. And then release the arms and step your feet wide. And turn the left foot out and take the right heel back and open into star pose. Bending the left knee open over your second metatarsal. Make sure your knee doesn't go forward of the ankle. Virabhadrasana two, inhale. The arms rise and come down. Maybe they circle forward and draw energy into the heart. Whatever feels good in your body. We keep pulsing the upper body inviting the lymph to move. And then we pause in our Vera 2, eyes out over the front fingertips, and we bring the back hand around and through the heart. And we let ourselves gently twist with the breath. Follow your inhale forward and your exhale through. 
Lower body stabilizes from the pelvis down deep into the feet. Feel how the adductors can hug towards one another to create stability at the base of the pelvis. And then pause. Arms outstretched, turn your left palm up, right fingertips land lightly on the back leg. Inhale into your dancing warrior. Broaden across the shoulder girdle. Can you relax the tissue of the neck? Do you feel some of the muscles working to hold you stable? And then we exhale. We release the neck into Vera 2. Let's come back into Dancing Warrior. Feel muscles working. Exhale back into Vera 2. Feel along the back right side body as you inhale into the Dancing Warrior. The muscles working. And then they get to relax. Bring the left hand to the femur, right arm up alongside the ear. Broaden across the shoulder girdle, stretch through your bones. And when you feel long enough, perhaps you fold lower. And you feel the compression in that left hip. Fluid breath here, opening the right side body skyward, stretch across the shoulder girdle. Lift the shoulder blades into the back body and root from your pelvis into both feet. Take some fluid, three-dimensional breath. And reach both hands open and then fist them. And open and fist and open and fist and open and fist. And if you'd like to, rainbow the top side body over the strong lower side. Let the breath ripple through the waters of your body. Can we nurture ourselves as we step into this new year, honoring the waters inside of us? Exhaling up into our Vera 2. Let's straighten the front leg. Turn it in and turn the right leg out. Left heel moves back. Heel to heel alignment for most people. We exhale into our Vera Bhadrasana 2. Spine straight up like the hot air balloon is lifting you from the palate. Turn the palms forward this time. Inhale, gather energy into the heart. Let the arms open. Gather. Exhale around. Inhale into the heart. Exhale. Inhale. Fluid breath. Can you keep your right knee open over the second metatarsal even as the upper body moves? And then let's bring our arms into the goalpost and bring the pinkies together and open them wide and pinkies together. Lower body strong and rooted. Find a pulse to your breath, inhaling one direction, exhaling the other. And then inhale, open and lift your arms, spread your fingers, reach your palms skyward. If you get to go on a play date. <laughs> Thank you. And then exhale. Release your arms to Vera 2. And let the left fingertips come to the back leg and the right palm lift. Broad across your shoulder girdle. Release the neck skyward. Let the breath pulse into the body. Find a gentle lift of the pelvic floor. And then come back to your Vera 2. Folding back into your dancer, feel how the muscles work and then they may relax. The leg muscles still working. Now we come back into the work of holding the spine in a gentle arch. We don't go too far. And then we come back and bring the right hand to the femur, left arm along the ear. And from the pelvis, we stretch out in each direction and lower onto the forearm and reach from the outer edge of the left foot through each finger. And then let's pulse the hands, fisting and opening. Maybe even this you do with your breath, inhaling one direction, exhaling the other. Broad across the shoulder girdle. Stable in the lower body. Notice where your adductors are now. <laughs> Notice how they work to support you, so your inner thighs. I like feeling the adductors of the back leg gently lift up into the bone. 
and then exhale, float back up to your Vira 2. Straighten the front leg, turn it in, and step the feet together. Pause for a moment in Mountain Pose. And just notice what the work is doing so far in the body. Fluid breath. Okay, let's bring in our chair. And if you'd like to have blocks to lower down on for Parsvottanasana, then bring in your blocks and we'll take a rock step. So step one foot forward, one foot back, you choose which, and rock forward and back like you're about to walk down the trail. And then set your feet, sit bone distance wide so that you're not on a tight rope, and inhale, reach. Draw the front leg hip crease back as you fold and feel how you're creating some compression in this front leg groin. This compression will be released. Breathe. From that front hip crease, lengthen the spine long. Notice if your shoulders are all bunched up around your ears, open your hands wide, lengthen the neck. Look down so that the back of the neck isn't shorter than the front of the neck. Fluid pranayama, the breath rippling through the waters of the body. If you'd like to, you can step your hands lower on the chair or down to blocks. Just make sure you're hinging from the hips. It should be a stretch of the front hamstring. If it's too much, you can bend that front knee. Think of your pelvis as broad. Grounding down into the four corners of each foot. Lift your toes, lift your arches. Release the toes, lift the toes, lift the arches. Release the toes, lift the toes, lift the arches, and keep going with a pulsing pattern to your feet, waking up the tissue in the feet. Long neck, let the head traction away from the pelvis. And then everybody walk back up hands to the top of the chair, or to your dress, or whatever you're on, pressing down into that prop with the opposite hand of the forward foot. Let the other arm go. Float that shoulder blade up like a wing on the back, the arm out to the side. So we're coming towards revolved triangle. Stay long in the spine, even through the neck, and perhaps you lift that wing skyward. Fluid breath. Twisting. And then exhaling, releasing. Both hands on your prop, float up. Bring your hands to your heart, step your feet together, and release your hands. Let your head and shoulders and sacrum rest back. Breathe. Feel into the leg that was the front leg, and notice, does it feel like there might have been some tension and then some release? a pulsing action in the body. And then step your next foot forward and take your rock step and ground your feet, sit bone distance wide and inhale, reach the arms skyward. And exhale, fold forward, drawing the front leg hip crease back. Really lengthen the spine. You can move your chair forward or walk back from your furniture. Think of that tabletop at the sacrum. Now, some of us, our tabletop may be a little askew from scoliosis. That's okay. Just think of how do I create symmetry in this body? Find your breath, and if you'd like to, slowly lower yourself down. Take your time so that you can feel into opening the hip, not cat curling the spine. Check in with the back knee. Make sure you're not hyperextending, that the four corners of each foot are grounding, supporting their arches to lift up through the legs. 
to help you create some compression in the front leg groin. Invite the breath deep into this compression, deep into the belly here. And then from the pelvis, rooting into the feet. Come back up, hands to the highest point. Keep the hand opposite of the forward leg on your prop and let the other arm dangle. Float that shoulder blade up onto the back ribs as you create a wing with the arm. Long from tailbone through top of head. Some of you may lift the wing. Make sure you're not lifting the hand. Lift at the head of the arm bone. Make sure it's an opening of the spine. Yes, good, Linda. And then exhale. Release your wing. Float up, hands to the heart, mountain pose. Pause in your mountain with your breath. Feel in to how each set of poses may change the landscape of the body, may invite more energy to move, more fluid. so that all this lymph is more likely to get cleansed as it moves through your lymph nodes. Let's draw the chair in now to the center and let's sit on the seat and open our legs wide, bringing the blocks forward. Sit bones onto the front of the chair. We'll now squeeze the lymph nodes in the groins from both sides, grounding the feet. Inhale, let the hot air balloon lift you skyward. Broaden your shoulder girdle, let your heart be lifted. Can you maintain this natural curving of the spine and hinge forward at the hips? Knees still lined up over your second metatarsals, they don't follow you in. Bring your hands to your props and your prop together, placing your left hand on the props. Let the right wing float out to the side. Right shoulder on the back. Breathe length into the spine. And if you'd like to, exhale and begin to lift with the shoulder, not the hand. And twist. Only twist as far as it's good in your body. Feel into your spine. Broad across the shoulder girdle, long in the neck. Now breathe into the tissue you're twisting. Invite some movement some opening, some compression, and then some release as you release the arm back down to your props and float the other arm out. Shoulder blade onto the back. Really find the strength of the shoulder blade on the back and twist from that shoulder. Keep the opposite knee open. Fluid breath. And exhale or release. Take your blocks further forward if that's comfortable, lengthening the spine in a seated forward fold. Feel now how you're really compressing in the groins of the legs. Invite your breath deep into this place, into this compression into your awareness of compression. And then rooting the feet, float yourself back up and walk your legs together. Pause in your seat with a fluid breath. I invite the breath to open the whole circle of the lowest ribs. Feel the diaphragm creating a ripple through the body. And let's turn to the right with our knees. If twisting seated doesn't feel good, feel free to stand. Inhale your hands to your heart and exhale slowly twist to the left, feet grounding. Bring the back of the right hand to the outside of the left leg and open the left shoulder back into the twist. 
the hand can be a little forward of the shoulder towards the front of the mat here. Yeah, good. I really like the way you're thinking about it, Linda. So we guide with the shoulder coming back in its socket so that it doesn't pop forward when we bring the hand back. And then we can kind of rest back and feel into where the breath goes. Invite the breath into the tight spaces. When we twist, we do compress the vertebrae more towards each other. We do slightly compress the discs. And then we exhale and release. And then we take the legs to the other side. Fluid breath, inhaling up the length of the spine. Exhaling, we begin to twist to the right, leading with the right shoulder blade. Bringing the left back of the hand against the right leg and bringing the right arm open. Can you stretch across the shoulder girdle and let the highway bone rest in and up? Let the breath pulse inside you. Think of how fresh rain fills a stream or a river and makes it flow. At the height of summer, the water may be very still and stagnant. If we get too much water, we may end up with flooding. This was happening in Tahoe before I left. People's driveways were flooded with water because they had snow and then they had rain and then it got warm. And that water was just sitting there. We're inviting the waters in our body to move. We exhale, hands back to the heart and walk the feet forward and pause in a comfortable seat, one palm resting in the other, thumbs touching one another. When we take care of the physical body, we may start to feel more grounded, more at ease, more able to nurture those in our families and communities in this new year. Breathe into your own full body awareness here. And then let's gently lift back up to standing. Bring your chair to the left side of your mat or your block for a revolved triangle pose. Stepping your right foot forward, step your left foot behind your prop and take your rock step. Remember, you'll be twisting towards the right front leg. And we inhale and lift and stretch, rooting from the pelvis down, lengthening the spine, lifting the low back ribs as we root the tailbone. Then we exhale and fold forward. And we come to the highest prop on fingertips first. And we breathe length into the spine. And then we lift the wing out to the side and we breathe length into the spine, rooting from the pelvis down into the four corners of the feet. And then we float the arm. We begin to lift it open. And we find a really open pose. And then perhaps we come lower to the hand. Or then perhaps we come lower to the block. Fluid breath, drawing that front hip crease back. Breathing length along the spine, space into the spine. And then exhaling. The right wing comes down and we inhale, reach for the sky. And exhale, hands to the heart. And pause. It's like we're wringing out the dish rag and then we're rinsing it. We're wringing it out and we're rinsing it. Let's switch sides with our props. And step the left foot forward and the right foot back and rock step. And then we land our feet. 
and we inhale and we lift our arms. And we root the tailbone and lift the low back rib ring. And we exhale, fold forward, drawing back at the front hip crease. And we bring the right hand down to fingertips on the prop. And we float the left arm open as a wing. Left shoulder blade onto the back. We lift through the pelvic floor. We lift the navel in and up. And we float the wing open into whatever rendition of the twist we're going to do. Then we notice, can we hold this twist and breathe into our bodies? I'm going to come check you out. Fluid breath. So you're twisting towards the front leg. Yeah, these are beautiful. Really nice breath across your shoulders, Jill. Very open pose. Beautiful neck alignment, Ellen. You too, Linda. Really nice work with your shoulders. Beautiful, Sharon. Everybody draw that front hip crease back a little and ground into your outer heel of the back leg. And then exhale, release. Rinse the dish rag in the fresh water <laughs> and float yourselves up and inhale your hands to your heart as you step your feet together. Mountain pose. Fluid breath. Now let's take a wide-legged standing forward fold. If you'd rather go back to the chair and the Upta Vista Konasana we just did, you can. You can fold hands onto the chair seat or hands towards your blocks, wide legs, taking the heels wide. We inhale and lengthen the spine. And we exhale, fold forward, groins hollowing back. Feel into how you're going to compress in the groins as you come forward. Hands to whatever height of prop works for you. Take the prop forward into your wide-legged downward dog. Let your pelvis rest back away from your hands. For me, I like taking my fingers over the front of the block, pressing the block into the sticky mat, and tractioning my pelvis back. Then I feel I can stretch the tissue a little more. Invite a little bit more movement in the fluids of the tissue. Deep and fluid breath. Inviting the breath to wash through the tissues of the body. You may sway your shoulders a little side to side or your hips. Finding tissue that you may not be conscious of all the time, but feeling it and inviting it to open. You may take your hands broader if that feels good in your shoulder girdle. Long neck. Head doesn't drop like a heavy fruit between the arms. We still have some hollowing to the armpits. We're not collapsing in the shoulder joint. We stay here for a moment. Head lower than the pelvis. Allowing some blood flow into the neck, the head, and the glands there. the blood to flow through these lymph nodes in the neck. I mean, and the lymph to flow through the lymph nodes in the neck. And then exhale, draw your blocks in beneath your face. Place your left hand on the blocks, right wing open, bring the right shoulder blade onto the back. Really press into the left hand so you're strong in the shoulder girdle. You can stay here or you can lift the right wing, grounding into the left wing keeping the left sit bone tacking back. Fluid, three-dimensional breath, where does it go now? What consciousness does the breath help you create? And then exhale. The right wing comes back down to the blocks and the left wing floats out to the side, left shoulder blade on the back. And as we ground into the right arm, we really broaden across the shoulder girdle to lift that left wing. And then we really deepen our awareness into the inner landscape, turning all our senses inward to notice, to honor, to love. 
and then we exhale and release the lifted wing, grounding into the four corners of the feet. We inhale up, hands to the heart, and we step the feet together and we pause in our mountain pose. Fluid breath. Now let's work for a moment on our standing balance. Come onto your mat or your floor where you feel like you can balance best and look down at your two feet, heels beneath your sit bones and come into your mountain pose. And let's start by rocking forward onto the balls of the feet and then rocking back towards the heels and seeing if we can lift the toes and the balls of the feet, rolling forward and back. Notice how you're moving in the tissue of the feet. And then roll forward and see if you can balance up on the balls. Really feel the big toe ball mound and towards the pinky toe ball mound. There's an arch there. And then roll back onto the heels and see, can you lift your toes? Can you even lift the balls of the feet up and balance towards your heels? Can you balance towards both of the back corners, left and right? And then roll forward and pause and lift your toes and lift your arches. Feel your big toe ball mound your inner heel, your pinky toe ball mound, your outer heel. Relax the toes and bring the left heel into the right um, calf and inhale, let your arms float skyward. Let the humerus bone release down as the hands rise. And then either lift your kickstand or bring your foot right up onto your calf for tree pose. Can you be broad across the shoulders? Now right here, can you fist and stretch the hands? Fist and stretch, fist and stretch, fist and stretch, all while hugging into the pelvis and rooting. Fist and stretch, fist and stretch. And then pause here, let the foot go, let the knee come out to the side and bring it forward and see if you can open it wide again and bring it forward and open it wide and notice how you're pulsing in this tissue of that hip and belly. And then bring it back and release and pause in your mountain pose. Deep breath into the low back, inviting the breath to ripple through your kidneys. And then bring the right heel into the left leg Hug the midline with the inner thighs, lift the pelvic floor, hug the outer hips onto the bone and lift the toe or place the foot on the calf and float your arms to whatever height is best for you. This time, let's let the arms float down and float up and float sideways and sideways and let them move. If it's possible to hold the arms up a little higher than the shoulders, we do because that lets the lymph drain back down towards the lymph nodes. We may even do bird actions with the arms to get that tissue flowing. All the while we're straight, strengthening our glute med for balance. You can stay here or float the foot, let go of the foot, float the knee to the side and bring it forward and bring it back. And like you're patting your head and rubbing your stomach, see if you can keep your hands moving too. It's always fun to play with it a little bit, challenge ourselves, and then release. And roll one shoulder back, and then the other, and sway your body from one side to the other. Invite the breath to ripple through the body's waters. Take the elbow, stretch. Some of you may take the hand. And then we're going to do one more Qigong move here that I feel like really helps us get that flow. The palms come up, the elbows come past the body. The heart lifts like an ocean wave and then it exhales, curls over. The backs of the hands come together in a cat curl. And then we inhale and back bend, lifting the heart and exhale, cat. Let your body become an ocean wave. Let the tissues move. Like the ocean wave, let the waters pulse through those 2,500 kilometers of passageways. 
visualize this flowing movement generated by your movement. And then gently come back to standing and pause with your breath. Let your eyes close. See how much of the sole of your foot you can lightly lift off the floor, keeping the four corners grounded. See if the hot air balloon can lift you skyward and you can create space between your vertebrae in your Tadasana. Fluid breath. And then let's gently bring ourselves to the floor. So you may end up wanting your chair for the final Shavasana. Please bring in your bolster, your blocks, and your yoga strap. You may want blankets to cover up, and you may want blankets for pillows. I don't know about you, but it's a little chilly here. And go ahead and lie down in your constructive rest position. Let your jaw relax. Let the lower jaw fall away from the upper jaw and hinge the jaw side to side like a grasshopper chewing. We invite the tissue even here in the jaw to move. Bring your hands up to your scalp and scratch your scalp. Just draw energy into the scalp. Just let your hands kind of massage the scalp. Come down to the earlobes and pull the earlobes a little bit and then draw the outer edges of the ears away from the ear. Just pull nicely. Inviting awareness and opening through these tissues. And then bring your hands up to your forehead, down to the area between your eyebrows, the third eye and massage up and down towards the bridge of your nose and back towards the center forehead. Gently massaging here. Then let your fingers open up along the eyebrows and just gentle pressure. Or bring your index finger and thumbs around your eyeballs and gently pinch along the eyebrows. Pinching and releasing. And then release your arms to your sides, palms up. And if you need a blanket under your sacrum, you can bring one there. Float one leg into your tabletop. And float the foot back down to the floor. Exhale the next leg up. Float it down to the floor. Let the shoulders relax and ground the arm bones heavy. As you float one leg and release it. Right here, we're doing gentle core work. Shoulders broad, relaxing the hyoid bone back. We're also doing postural alignment work. And then we float one leg up and pause and float the next leg up and pause and we draw the knees into the chest and circle them wide and back together again. Feel what tissue is impacted by the stirring of the femur bones. We get other fluids moving by doing this. The synovial fluids come out of these synovial sacs that are kind of like saliva glands to release into the joint. Take the knees the other way. 
Notice if your pelvis is moving a lot, if you're flattening the lumbar spine, can you circle the legs without flattening the lumbar? Just try it. There's no right or wrong. Then draw the knees back in and hug the right knee into the chest and lengthen the left leg out at your 45 degree angle. And we switch and switch and switch. Notice how you're compressing and releasing, compressing and releasing each side. Some of you may stay here. Some may nod nose towards mouth and almost lift from the hairline. If you don't have osteoporosis or pino or a neck injury, you may lift your head. And we keep pulsing at the groins. Feet lifted now above the pelvis to allow the lymph to drain back towards the pelvis from the feet. And we hug both knees in and rest the head back and reach the hands and feet skyward and take wrists away from ankles and circle the arms and hug the knees in. We reach out and we hug in. We extend and we compress in the pelvis. Normally we're focused on the strength of the core supporting the leg movement out. Now I want you to be just as aware of the compression in. As you pull the legs in, do you also kind of compress in the belly, moving the tissue in the abdomen? This feels important to me as my dad had pancreatic cancer. He had cancer all over the abdomen by the time they found it. We want to keep the fluids in the abdomen moving. We reach and hug and reach and hug. And then let's lower one foot and then the other and bring in either our block, a blanket, or a bolster and take the blanket out that you had as a pillow if you were using one. So you're coming into your supported bridge. And pause here for a moment, breathing deep into the pelvis, relaxing the shoulder girdle broad. You can rest your hands right on your belly. Breathe into the hands. Move the tissue. Now bring your hands to your side waist and breathe into the hands. Move the tissue. Now bring your hands around your back and breathe into your palms. Really invite the breath to fill the hands. And then Release the hands so that palm face palm over the body and float one leg to tabletop and the other to join and bring the right leg overhead and the left leg long in a scissor and pulse, pulse the legs and switch, pulse, pulse and switch. When Joseph Pilates created these exercises, he didn't know how good they were for the lymph system. <laughs> Flex your feet, spread your toes and pulse, 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 pulse. pulse. It doesn't matter how big the movement is. In fact, if the movement's small and the toes are skyward, then you're getting more lift to drain, right, with the help of gravity. But you can open the legs too and get that compression and release in the groins. Pulse, 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 pulse. And then take it right into riding a bicycle. And let your legs move in that bicycle form. Point your toes. Point your toes, yeah. Get those muscles active in the soles of the feet and then flex the feet. Stretch out with the heel, stretching the calf. Yes. And then come back to center. Feet together, flexed feet. Open your legs wide and pulse, pulse and come together. Pulse, pulse and come together. Open your legs and pause. Reach your hands towards the sky. Here you are in your Upta Vista Konasana. <laughs> I mean, you're, uh, yeah, well, you're, if you were sitting on the chair, your forward fold or your Prasarita Padottanasana. And then bring your legs together and hug 
the right knee in. Let the left leg hang long over your block. Hugging in, you may rock slightly the knee towards the chest. The foot towards the floor may lift a little and then release. Like you're rocking the fluids of the body now. Compressing one side, releasing the other. Deep, fluid breath into both. And then hug in the other leg. Or reach long the other side. Rock gently if that feels right in your body. Stay with that fluid pranayama. Can you be lovingly aware of parts of the body you don't generally notice right now? With kindness, can you tell these parts, I see you? I feel gratitude for what you do for me. Can we practice this kindness in our own microcosm? And then draw the other leg back in and lift the feet skyward. Bend the knees slightly in towards the chest and rest. You can stay here at this height, or if you're on a block, lower your feet, and if you'd like to, lift the block to medium, bringing the legs back up. Pausing here in rest mode. Visualize the lymph flowing down to the tissues of the legs. Notice if sensation changes in the feet. Take your feet as wide as your hips and circle at the ankle. And take the circles the other way. And switch direction whenever it feels good. When we get stiff, some of our tissues get kind of like dehydrated. So we move and we invite fluid back in. And then we pause and relax. And invite fluid to drain. And it's important in your own practice, if you want to do this for good health of the body, to have the limbs lifted for even five minutes, maybe more. Mr. Iyengar recognized the so many benefits of these inversions. And then let's float one foot gently to the floor and then the other. Pausing again in the bridge, feel how the groins are stretched open. Can you breathe into the groins and invite them to relax open? Invite the tissues of the abdomen to rise and then fall. And then inhale, lift the pelvis up off your block and release the pelvis to the floor and come into your somatic walking. Fluid breath and fluid movement. Letting yourself rock gently side to side. Let's reach for our yoga strap. 
and bring it up over the left foot. If you'd like your bolster beside the left leg when you open it to the left, you can bring it over there. Or perhaps you'd prefer a block. Stretch the right leg out on the floor, the right arm out in a T, and open the left leg to the left, grounding your right side body. Can you breathe deep into the pelvic bowl? And then exhale energy through each limb, through the top of the head. Imagine yourself as a pulsing star. Light leaves through the toes and the fingers and the top of the head. And it comes back in again. Can it move through all the nadis? the rivers of the meridians, through the channels of the lymph and blood. And then exhale to center and take the leg across the body. You may want your left hand in the left hip crease pressing the left femur down. And just pulse the leg over with the sacrum still on the floor and then open it back up and pulse it over and open it up and feel how you're inviting tissue to stretch, compress, and release. You're just pulsing your foot to the side over the body and back to neutral, to the side and to neutral, and then to the side. And if you'd like to come into your complete twist, do so. You can rest your foot on a block or a bolster or a wall. Now invite one really deep breath. It's just a nice kind of yawning stretch of a breath. And then relax into the posture. That means relaxing the muscles of the face and the eyes and the jaw. When we relax these socially interactive muscles, we invite the other muscles in the body to follow. And then invite your left hand across to take the strap and lift the leg back up and bend the knee in towards the armpit. Half happy baby, arms lifted, lymph draining now from the arms. You can stay here or stretch the left leg long out to the side, stretching from foot to foot also stretching length from the pelvis through the spine. And then we exhale, bend the knee and draw the other foot up into the strap. A releasing the left foot to the floor, lengthen the left leg out. Take the strap in the right hand and open the left arm into a T, taking the right foot out. You know now to ground the left body. Can you stretch open across the groin? Can you let the adductors stretch open here? Reaching out through the feet, grounding across the shoulders. Fluid breath. Picture standing on your left foot. How would you hold the pose together if you were standing on the left foot? And breathe into this visualization of balance. And then as you're ready, exhale the right leg back to center. Take the strap in the left hand, the right hand to the hip crease. And bring the right foot across the body and then back to neutral, foot towards the sky. Cross the body and to neutral. Feel into what compresses, what stretches, what releases as you pulse. And 
And then if you'd like to open up into your twist. Fluid breath. Relaxing on the exhales. Relaxing the jaw, the face, the eyes. Relaxing into the posture. Feel how the twist helps you compress the intestines, compress the abdomen. And how when you lift the leg, you'll release that compression. And rinsing out the dish rag of the body. Bring your right hand across as you're ready and lift the right foot back to center and bend the right knee in towards your armpit. Let the hands be high towards the foot so the arms can drain the lymph. Fluid, deep breath. Notice how you're compressing the right abdomen. Breathe into the compression. Feel the sensations of the compression. If you'd like to, open the right leg out straight to the side. If not, don't do it. Visualize standing on your left foot. Solidify the pose. Draw your limbs in. Integrate them towards the spine. Root the foot you'd be standing on. Lengthen through the top of the head. Practicing balance here. And then exhale back to center. And release the leg. Step your feet back into constructive rest. No pillow under the head. Tailbone towards the sky, peel the spine up off the floor, take a deep inhale at the top, and then exhale, roll down one vertebrae at a time. Roll into your natural lumbar curve, and then exhale, tailbone towards the sky, peel off, take a deep inhale at the top, and then exhale, roll. Follow your own breath, inhaling the pauses, exhaling the movement. Now you're using the floor to kind of massage the tissue, your own compression and release. Stay with your fluid breath. And then come back down into your neutral and roll yourselves over and come onto hands and knees. You can always stand at the chair with your hands on the seat as well and inhale your cow and then exhale the movement into cat and inhale into your cat. And exhale the movement into cow and inhale into your cow, taking your time. Feel each finger pad on the floor. Press them in so that you can lift the center of the palm, taking a little weight off the carpal tunnel. And then come back into your neutral. And take your left hand forward and your right foot back and float the fingertips and the foot up and float them down to touch. Lengthen from tailbone through top of head as you lift and lower. Working on integration for balance here, working on strengthening your multifidi, even as you pulse tissue. Inhale, hand and foot up, bring elbow towards knee, compression, and then lengthen and follow your breath. Inhaling, open, and exhaling the compression. Mm -hmm. 
and then pause. Lengthened out, long neck all the way to tailbone. And release. And take out the left fingertips, right toes. And inhale up and exhale, release. Keep going. Try not to lift the heel so high that you come into a back bend. Keep the front abdomen strong, the tailbone reaching long. And then inhale up and exhale, elbow towards knee and inhale, stretch and exhale in and inhale and exhale. Follow your own breath. But feel what tissue am I compressing and then lengthening. And then lengthen out and pause. And release. Bring your big toes together, knees wide, and fold back into your child's pose. Let your pelvis settle. Fluid breath. Take your hands out to one direction, breathing into the opposite side body. And then exhale your hands back to center and walk them around to the other side. Inhaling into the stretch. Exhaling, relaxing the tissue. Inviting fluids to pulse through even the tight tissue in the body. Come back to center. Hands at least shoulder distance wide. Each finger pad active. Center of the palm lifted. Roll your toes under and lift into a bent-legged downward dog. Come up onto the balls of your feet and bend the knees as much as you can, compressing in the groins, and then straighten the legs as far as they go comfortably in your body. And then bend and keep the spine long. Keep the center of the armpits hollowed and lifted, the neck long, head a little above the arm bones as you pulse the knees, bending and straightening. building up our body strength while we pulse the lymph. And then come back down to hands and knees. Roll back towards your heels. And if you need to, bring a block in to sit on. Maybe you bring two blocks in. And you pause in your seat. If it is uncomfortable for you to stay in Virasana, then go ahead and find a different seated position. Breathe, length up the spine, and exhale gently, twist in one direction. Let the twist move all the way up the spine from your stable seat. Take a few fluid breaths. Feel into the column of the spine. Where are you compressing? Where are you stretching? And then exhale back to center. Pause in center. Feel how the body shifted in the twist. And then gently take the twist the other way. All the way up, even into the neck. Just remember to twist lightly, especially if you have osteoporosis or pina. We don't want bone-on-bone -bone compression. Invite the breath to move the tissue. The lower body grounding. Your inner thighs may be able to help with this. Your pelvic floor, your rooting sit bones and tailbone. Exhale back to center. Let your arms float up like wings. They don't have to be high. 
and exhale, gently twist in the first direction again. Spread across the wings. Relax the shoulders on the exhales. Maybe nod the chin a little towards the sternum to stretch the back of the neck. Lift the head to neutral and exhale, hands to the heart. Breathe into all the tissues of the body. Can we be compassionate in our awareness as we open the wings again and twist the other way? Not pushing too hard, finding that place where the breath can pulse the tissue, where we're not straining, but we are strengthening. We are lengthening. Feel where you compressed and then feel it as you release. And rest your hands in your lap again. Deep breath into the low back and the side waist and the belly. Inviting the lymph to move through all the lymph nodes in the abdomen. Let's think of the lymph as a healing balm that flows through the whole body. You can stay here or you can gently bring your hands palm to palm and lift them elbows wide up overhead. Can you rest here, hyoid bone back, shoulders relaxed? And then bring the hands down to the heart. If we could offer ourselves some loving intentions for our own body, mind, and heart, our well being this year, what would they be in 2023? You don't have to limit yourself, let them flow. And then release your hands into your lap. And let's come into Shavasana. Today, either with legs up a wall, with your pelvis on a bolster, or legs in um, waterfall pose on the chair, pelvis on a bolster or a blanket. Please bring in your eye pillow if that helps your, you physically relax. Blankets socks, whatever you need. And let yourself get comfortable. So wiggle around. Get your blankets just so... Rest your hands where they'll feel good. Sometimes for me, I put them under my shirt on my belly because my fingers get cold. <laughs> this is one way to warm them up. Then settle into the gentle rocking of your ocean wave breath.
Invite the muscles of your face and eyes and jaw to rest into the rocking. Fluid breath. Invite the upper body to rest back onto the back body. Invite breath into the groins and into the armpits. Invite healing breath into the abdomen. into the lymph nodes of the neck. Invite a deep and healing relaxation for the whole body mind, heart, and spirit. And then gently reach your hands skyward and stretch your fingers. If you'd prefer to stay in this Shavasana for even 20 more minutes, please feel free to do so. Otherwise, stretch your hands and your feet, pulsing them. Hands above the body, letting the lymph drain from the arms. And then as you're ready, fold yourself in, release yourself from your props, and roll over onto a side for a moment and rest. Think how you can integrate the class into the rest of your day. And then let's gently roll ourselves up and come to a comfortable seat.
Let's come back to awareness of our breath and our bodies, the whole inner landscape. Notice if you feel like fluids are moving, energies moving, vibrations in your body. And let's inhale our hands to our hearts. May our practice nourish and nurture the whole of us. May we love and respect all the waters in our body. Namaste. Thank you.